It's never been easier to write TypeScript and JavaScript in Visual Studio. Come learn about the latest, greatest updates that you can find in Visual Studio, not VS Code, on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today I'm excited because we will be talking about basically what's new with TypeScript and JavaScript and Visual Studio, which I think is super exciting because honestly, when I think TypeScript and JavaScript, I usually don't think Visual Studio first. I typically think Visual Studio code. So talking, uh, so joining me today is Jayan from the TypeScript and JavaScript team is going to share a little bit more. How's it going? Pretty good. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jayan and I'm a PM working on a JavaScript and TypeScript experiencing video studio. So today we have a couple of exciting updates for you. So we will also do a couple of live demos to show all those exciting features that we have in the last couple of release. So I'm super glad to have it demoed. Uh, so first we're gonna talk about our agenda for today. So for so first one, we will definitely answer the questions why you should uh, use JavaScript and TypeScript together with like .NET in video studio. So as what Leslie mentioned, uh, a lot of people will think about VS Code, but we, wh why, why you should do this in Visual Studio and why those features will be of useful to you. So this is the first question we're gonna explore. The second one, we will introduce our com couple combined projects templates. Those are the new updated ones uh, for a kind of multi-project solution. So you, you will be having a JavaScript and, uh, and a, a, and a .NET like uh, project together in one solution. The third one we're going to talk about is the revamped uh, code editing experience that we're going to have in Visual Studio. So that's uh, very exciting and you will have like a very good like code editing experience and your favorite code lens uh, for JavaScript and TypeScript. Uh, the next one we're going to talk a little more about dependency management, a UI-based NPM dependency management tool and also a live demo on this. The last one we're going to talk a little more on what's on our roadmap and also like uh, to, to to demonstrate like what we what we, what we what we plan to do and also hear a little more feedback from the audience. Yeah, let's get started. So awesome. first one, we're gonna talk about why JavaScript and TypeScript in Visual Studio. So one, I, I think the biggest highlight for this one is uh, you can run your backend, uh, typically .NET and frontend, typically JavaScript application together in one place in Visual Studio with potentially one click. And uh, we do support JavaScript and types hosted in .NET, uh, MAUI, and C++ apps through like WebView 2. I think it's also very exciting support that we have in Visual Studio. We do support uh, popular JavaScript frameworks, so including Angular, React, and Vue. So those ones are the first class supported uh, native in Visual Studio without any kind of plugin request. Uh, the, the last one is like uh, you, you can refer, uh, reference your JavaScript projects from ASP.NET projects so that it will be available for MS Build. Cool. Uh, let, let's move to the first one. Um, it's the project templates. So here are the links to the tutorials of the project. So it's ASP.NET Core with React, Angular, and Vue. So they are the combined templates, and you can just search full stack, full stack application in new project dialog. So it does work out of the box. So you have like the multiple project start, start experience under the same solution. You can you are able to build, test, and deploy your uh, JavaScript application separately with the .NET uh, ones that you already have in your solution. So let's do a quick lab demo to get started with. So here's my- And also to clarify before you start your demos, all of this is available in the latest version of Visual Studio, not VS Preview, right? Yes. So this cool. is release. It's actually there 17.5, but since we just released 17.6, so you can just get it the latest uh, GA version of Visual Studio to 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 see those features. Hear that, folks? No excuses. If you don't like to use the preview build of VS, you're in luck. You can just try all this stuff right right now in GA. So go try it out. Anyway. <laughs> yep. Switch back to the screen so as, as everyone sees this is like no preview no internal preview real studio 17.6 ga we go to file new project as everyone does for the new project dialog so in here i search full stack application 
So those top fours, Angular, React, Vue for ASP and ASP.NET Core. So today the demo will be based on React, which is the most popular one that we that we see usage. So you click Next, give give it a solution name, find a location, and just create a new solution. So hit Create. It takes a it's a while. So this is a solution that I created using exactly the same templates out of the box uh, before the demo. So you see the front end, uh, it's a React app. It's a bunch of JavaScript stuff in there. You do have a web API, it's a, like ASP.NET web, web API project. So you have those controllers. It's called Weather Forecast, as everyone's pretty familiar with that. After project creation, you go to properties. So here you can do either a single startup project where you can choose which project you want to start or does the multiple startup projects. So you set up React app and web API both for start and click OK. So then you run exciting F5. I hit F5, so both projects start to build and deploy or run. So here's my command line window. So this is what's running for the uh, React project. And uh, we start a development server. So I see my Chrome, like I can see my browsers opening. And uh, yeah, so here it is. So this is the backend where you get the get weather forecast API. So it's a 200 code. So you can you can see what's going on from the backend in, in the swagger that we show here. And this is our front end localhost 3000. So it's a weather forecast. It's giving you five random weather forecasts for the next five days. You can see the temperatures and summaries. Every time you refresh that, it will be a different sets of like uh, results, et cetera, vented by the web backend down at web APIs. So yeah, so this is just like running out of box with a single F5 click. And that uh, is really cool. Because like before this, you had to have, didn't you have to have like separate templates for your front end and your back end or, or something similar to that? Yeah. And as, as you mentioned, like VS Code, we believe like a lot of users are running like the JavaScript application in VS Code, and then like start their API from either Real Studio or like doing at a staging server. So you do need like two places started differently and like configure the startup scripts like uh, separately. But now you you are able to do this at one place right from like the product creation. We believe that's like enhancing the productivity a lot for our developers. Yeah, it saves a lot of time. Yeah. And then like similar experience that you have with the text explorer. So if you notice here in the React app, we do have an app.task.js. So there's a JavaScript JS test uh, written for this application. It's really basic, but it's, uh, it's working. So after four seconds, it's like running those tests and it tells you that it runs successfully. Excellent. And the, that testing functionality, was that there prior to this update or is this uh, also a new addition? It's there for a while, but it's just showing you to here in case you are not aware that it's here. Sweet. You can actually run the JavaScript test in the test explorer. Yep. That's the beauty and the curse about Visual Studio sometimes. It's like there's always so much in it that you might discover new features that are actually old ones and vice versa. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's cool. You learn something new all the time. <laughs> Awesome. So, um, yeah, awesome. That is really exciting. Yeah, the next, uh, I think, is the most exciting feature that we bring to 17.6, which is only announced like a week or two ago. So uh, it's the syntax highlighting that we have. So the front, like the top is 17.5, bottom mm -hmm. is 17.6. See the color is just so much richer. You do have the personalization, so you can configure your own color if you want a different color for the control control keyword, just do it differently. I don't like pink. I mean, like uh, gray. I can I can do whatever I want. And the uh, next one is the link to editing. So this is the only feature that's not available in GA. So it's in preview. So if you want that, you need to install preview for that. We do have your favorite code lens here for JavaScript and TypeScript. You can jump jump among, uh, 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 jump across different places where you have the code. And here's uh, another live demo. So let me pull out uh, Real Studio. And uh, uh, yeah, so this is how rich the color is. Uh, so for example, in here, we have the calculate.js. So first you have 
like a set of new colors for control keyword if return you have like those for the parameters a separate color the values are separate colors the strings are separate colors so we do add support for escape characters so like anytime you type that it's gonna be different in your screen uh, as compared with the strings and uh, functions have having its own color and uh, uh, JS doc, we also add like the parameters and the variable names with different colors. So it's pretty clear to see those difference from the green ones that you have usually in the kind of, uh, in the, in the JS doc. This Reference. Is so nice to have. <laughs> I, I've definitely taken a project that has like JavaScript components, uh, NDS code and like moved it to VS and always got so annoyed when it's just like all the beautiful colorization is gone and it just i don't know it just, there's something about it that makes me feel like i'm being less productive because i'm having to pay more close attention to what i'm writing <laughs> as a result <laughs> so yeah that's nice to this have is, this is a highly requested feature so we made it available in 17.6 so in here so there's four reference for the calculate so i see this calculate app.js is invoking the calculate so i go there and i see this on line 15 it's being called yeah, I, I can go back to where it is. Uh, yeah, so it helps you easily navigate through the code. And uh, you do have, like, if you have, like, TS files, you have another set of colors for map, string, and numbers. Those are all kind of editable through, like, tools, options. So you will see, like, uh, fonts and colors. Uh, for example, control keywords. Like it's, it's called user the types so for example type parameters structures sorry it's a user members uh, uh, I made a mistake but yeah so you if you want to configure here you go to front end colors go to user members so here for example masters this is function name namespaces parameters properties and uh, in them numbers you can you, you can configure whatever color you want. So for example, if I want uh, cane for my master, and I click OK, so you will be seeing the calculate. It's having a brand new color. It's like more highlighted than than ever. Yep. So, uh, next yeah. Next one we have is for example the if we open a JSS file, so. Go, go ahead and type tags. So for example, dev or div, you can just see it here directly. Like it's the link to editing that's working. So you don't need to type the same the the same symbol again. So it, it will just work and duplicate for you. You do need TypeScript 5.1 installed uh, in, in your project in order to use this feature. I believe TypeScript uh, 5.1 just, we just also GA that. So you'll be able to use that as long as you have that uh, for your project. Yeah. Really cool. Um, yeah, just nice quality of life improvements that would make a lot of people's, including myself, <laughs> uh, lives a lot easier, definitely. Um, yeah, that is really exciting to see. I think... Um, out of curiosity, is all of this compatible with um, preferences that you put in to say, like your editor config file? Yeah. Sweet. So JavaScript and TypeScript will read all that. That's awesome. And then if I had like one wish list item, I would love to see um, like rainbow braces support uh, added to JavaScript and TypeScript too. I think that would be like the icing on the cake for me personally. I know that's still a pretty new feature. It's in uh, C++ and C Sharp have it, but... Be cool to see yeah, it. I heard that. I'm looking into that. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. The next Love one I'm going to talk about dependency management. So in here, uh, this is the same solution that we just created. So it's a React app. So underneath that, you have an NPM here. So you do right click, install new NPM packages. That's how you add up a new package for uh, JavaScript and TypeScript projects. So for example, if I want a JSON. So uh, there's a couple packages to help you process like JSON. So 
I have just already installed for my project, but if I want something different, this is a JSON two .js, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I click install package and wait for a little while. It's installed, and it will tell you that this one is installed locally. And uh, then you have this already installed for your package. So if you go to package.json, you will also see this one as updated and it's working here. Uh, this is how you do like a UI based pack, a dependency management in JavaScript projects for Visual Studio. That is great. So prior to this, uh, that NPM window didn't exist within Visual Studio, right? So I'm assuming you just had to go to the NPM, the NPM site, like in your browser and. Yeah. Or you use like come online, like, you, oh, yeah. People, yep. yeah, people do open like a PowerShell. Mm -hmm and like click on say like npm install json yeah so this is yep. how people usually like install but like they they were they were now able to kind of find it through the ui they can search and find whatever they want and get a brief introduction or a description on what the package is actually doing before they actually already installing the project i think it's a very helpful one for the developers yeah. to make sure that they get what they need yeah that, that, that is a nice option to have. And some people are very much all in on the command line. Not everybody, though. So, like, having that option is great yeah. for those folks. And also just from a browsing standpoint, not having to leave the IDE to go. Yeah. It's like you can shop explore. around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can shop. See what's available, which version is, like, latest, and so on and so forth. And see if you already have that. This right. is, like... <laughs> Your shopping cart, you already have that. Uh, you don't need to buy it again. But this one, I don't have it. I take a yep. look. If I love that, I can also link to its GitHub page and see what's going on there in more detail. Yeah. Those are not available in, in the command line for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. And no one wants to pay for the same thing twice. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. That is so cool. Those are some huge updates. Yeah. So, what's next? Yeah, what's next? The first one is like improve npm UI. You know, like uh, people are looking for new new get level kind of support, so we try to make it happen. So uh, make the UI more interactive. You can even select different versions to install. Uh, yeah, so this is the first thing. The second thing is the Azure separate front end development the deployment. So people do ask for they want to get their JavaScript project to Azure Static Web App or app, Azure App Services. So we want to be able to help them like push their stuff to Azure. So that's like another one click and everything. It's not only working on your local machine, but it's also working on Azure and accessible to everyone that's who's looking for this experience. And uh, the third one we are going to do is like, uh, like the project and solution ideas, like not really familiar to JavaScript developers. So we want to make sure that we can, you can open any code, any folder and run them in Visual Studio. Uh, try to give a couple of different options for user to select from, but like get code, get the JavaScript project or code into a JavaScript project in Visual Studio and working with other projects in the same solutions. And the next one is going to be inline unit tests. So we'll be able to test those uh, JavaScript uh, code inline. So you, you just hit, hit run and it'll tell you if the test runs successfully. So you don't need to run every, everyone from the uh, test explorer, you can run just one test that's like really have some code changes on to further increase the productivity. And then we will do a better job on MS build integration. So I want to make sure that it's it's supposed to support in the cloud native case where you have like JavaScript and, and done stuff like pretty much separate. Or you have a model repo that's have everything just like using MS build since we'll be getting there optimized for you so that you can publish them at the same time. Yeah, so this is what's next. So super excited for the plan. And please let us know your feedbacks. We'll submit a feedback requ a feature request or feedback ticket. Let us know how we are doing, if you like the new feature, if you want to suggest something in the future. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited to see what comes next. This is really meaty stuff. <laughs> and it's cool that seemingly now it's easier than ever to have that same productive experience with TypeScript and JavaScript, whether you're in VS Code or whether you're in VS. So can't wait to see more. So thank you so much, Diane. Yep. Thank you, Ashley. Yep. And folks, go check out the new features if you haven't already. All of the links that we mentioned will be in the show notes below. So check it out. And until next time, happy coding.